prayer in your cabin. Read those books in a blink. Oh yeah. Grab yourself a hot drink because you're watching how to train your Gavin. Yep, that's me. Hey guys, welcome back to How to Train Your Gavin. Today I am doing a UK, UK. Today I'm doing a UK versus USA book cover battle. I'm going to do a middle grade edition of this because as we all know, middle grades have the best covers on the planet. That is fact. That is a genuine fact. Google it. It's, it's true. Now there are loads of this type of video on booktube. However, I don't know who started it off. If you search in YouTube, it does have a lot of results. I have seen um, Hayley and Buchland's versions of it though. She might have started it off, I don't know. I need to research this a lot better. I'm gonna say that I was quite inspired by Hayley and Buchland to do this video, but this is the middle grade edition of it. Because I did put on Instagram like a question thing, like, oh, what book covers would you like for me to compare in this video? And I got a lot of responses. A lot of responses are books that I was already gonna do anyway, but it was great to see other ones as well, some possibilities that I could use. But a lot of people were saying as well, like, oh my gosh, like the UK is gonna win hands down because more often than not the UK does have a gorgeous gorgeous cover however I don't know if that's definitely going to be the case for this video so it'll be interesting to find out I will leave like a sort of tally on the bottom to see which one I prefer and which one I don't and see which country wins in terms of best middle grade book covers also do play along as well like let me know write a comment I'll put all the book titles in the description copy and paste it and then put which one you prefer either the UK or the US edition let me know and then tally it up at the end see if we think the same on these. I feel like that would be quite fun. So the first book that I'm going to do is A Pinch of Magic by Michelle Harrison. I mean the UK cover honestly is probably my favourite book cover of all time. I'm just saying that hands down and straight away I have a huge bias towards the Pinch of Magic UK cover because it is literally one of my favourites. What I love about it is that it is rather magical. It's just it's so colourful, it's so illustrated, and it has all of the items, the magical items from the story. And I won't be going into what these books are about or anything, I'm just comparing book covers. But I feel like you do get a really good sense of what the story is about from the cover in this one. I love the Crowstone Tower in this as well, it's a really important setting for this for this book. Uh, but I also do really enjoy the US cover as well. I do own this. It came in an Alcray Junior box and I do really love that cover as well. I love how you can see the sisters animated. It does show you the, the sisterhood that is very prominent in this book. And oh god, it is it it's not as easy as I thought it would be because I do love how both of them represent different things and I just love how the US cover does have the sisters on and you can see them. They each look like the characters as well. I do think they look like the characters. Charlie, the, the youngest, is so, so cute. And it's also a very whimsical cover. We have two very whimsical covers. However, I am gonna say that the UK version of A Pinch of Magic is the best cover here. I mean, I, I'm sorry, but I honestly, that cover, it just, it does something to me. I love it so much. It's my favourite book cover of all time. There, I've said it. <laughs> okay, next I'm gonna do Frostheart by Jamie Littler. And again, like, I honestly love the UK cover with all of my heart. I love how it's illustrated by Jamie Littler. And, oh, like, when you see it in person as well, it does have the cutout where the circle is. And, yeah, I mean, it's just absolutely gorgeous in it. Gosh. Ugh. I also do own the US version of it as well because it came in an Alcray Junior box again. Um, but this time it's called Voyage of the Frost Heart. And, I mean, I do really enjoy this cover as well. It represents a part of the story very well about the whole, you know, snow sea and you have the leviathan surrounding the characters in the middle there. It's definitely a lot more white than the UK version and I feel like my eye, because both of them are on the screen together here because I'm just Google images on these, my eyes are drawn to the UK version just straight away. So I do think, again, the UK version of this is better than the US version. However, I do still love both editions. Oh god, like, this is, it's, I feel horrible, I feel horrible, but honestly, it's just UK book covers are just, oh, so good. I just love the UK Frost Heart cover though, it's just, oh, it's so beautiful and so blue, and so blue, I love it. Okay, right, I'm gonna move on. <laughs> now, next I'm gonna do The House of Chicken Legs by Sophie Anderson, and honestly, this is a hard one, because I, 
Again, I love the UK version. It's very colourful. You get the purple and I love the purple. You also see part of the story as well with the house with the chicken legs, but also the fence and the trees and the girl, Marinka. You can see her. And it's just very, I don't know the word, but it's just, it stands out. It stands out. Now for the US edition, why I am so torn with this one is because the the illustrator, the person who does the covers for Sophie Anderson's books in America, it's actually like a clay thing. It's a bit like, you know, um, Leica Studios, who makes like Kubo and the Two Strings and Coraline. They actually set up like a set and they've sculptured the actual book cover and, you know, made this scene. And they've taken like the, the shot of it and that's the book cover. Like there's just so much that goes behind this American version of this cover that honestly, I, oh, I just, I love the style of it as well. And like, I know there's just so much work on into it too. Like I, I'm more than positive. A lot of work went into the UK cover as well. Of course it did. But I just can't get over how brilliant the American cover is for this and the, what went behind it. So I am going to say the American version is better than the UK version for this one. Even though I have such fond memories of the House with Chicken Legs and the UK cover. It was one of the first middle grades I read when I got back into reading. So I owe a lot to it. But I just, I, ugh, my eyes just love that American edition. <laughs> and I was only going to do one book per author. However, Sophie Anderson does have The Girl Who Speaks Bear, which was done in the exact same way. Like, what I love about these covers for Sophie Anderson is that each, I think there's been a different illustrator for each of the UK editions, but each of them, they do rather fit very well and very nicely together. But then the same with the American versions. I believe it's the exact same style and artist of the American edition. They set up the scene, and I will leave a link to the video. I'm sure there is a video of YouTube of the illustrator actually doing this scene for the cover and honestly when you say your mind is just blown at how amazing it is oh, like every time I look at it I just I don't know why but I feel proud <laughs> so as much as I love the UK edition again I absolutely do love the UK version I think the American version of Girl Who Speaks Better is also astronomical and I'm going to give it to America on this one I really hope that the Castle of Tangled Magic gets the exact same treatment for the American cover Oh, can you imagine just like all of them just looking the, the same? Like, oh god, that is my, my completionist dream come true. So that's what I'm hoping. So next we have The Strange World Travel Agency by L.D. Lipinski. And this one, the American version, I think comes out in April 2021. Now I do love the American cover. It does show you what you are going to be expecting in the book. We have Jonathan and Flick on the cover there, going from suitcase to suitcase, and each suitcase takes them to a different world. I love that. I love I love that. I don't know why, but I feel like the UK version just shows a bit more of the imagination that is behind the story. And I love the fact that Flick is being, well, sort of pulled into a suitcase and there are other items in different parts of the world being spilled from suitcases. And it just shows the kind of like chaos and the colourfulness of this world. So I think I will say the UK cover wins on this one too. However, I, I absolutely love the illustrations of Flick and Jonathan on the cover of the American version. I love, I mean, Jonathan's one of my favorite characters like in books ever. And I love, I just love the way he's depicted. He looks exactly how I think in my head. So I think it's so true and so loyal to the characters. So if I could have those characters on the UK cover, then honestly it would be, I, I just, I don't think my ovaries could handle it. However, I am going to say the UK cover wins this one. Okay, this one has two different titles, so I'm going to have to go back and forth with this one. <laughs> and it also has three different covers. Okay, so. So the next one I'm going to do is Rumble Star by Abby Elphinstone. This is the first book in the Unmapped Chronicles. However, it's called Casper Talk and the Everdark Wings in America. And I own both again, and that's because Casper Talk was in an Alcrate Junior box. So I do own both. Again, like that was so accidental though, but to be fair, it's gorgeous in person too so I would absolutely have loved to have it anyway. The thing with the UK one though is that it just got a new re-release and a new cover which is sort of similar to the old one but different so I mean I put it up on the screen for you so you can see what I mean. So I will compare the new cover with the American cover 
because I do love the UK cover very much. I love both of them. I own the old cover. But what I love about the new UK cover is that the, the font and the title is a lot more prominent. It looks a bit more mystical and magical because there's a splash more colour on the cover too. And it's not too far away from the original, so it's not like it's just had a complete overhaul. It just, it looks great and it matches Jungle Drop so beautifully. So I do love that. And then with the American cover, I, I love, oh gosh. Okay, I'm looking at it more close up and I could just pull it off the shelves and stuff, but I, I said I wouldn't do that. And that's a hard one actually, because I love how prominent the, the series name is on the American cover. And I love how, because it is about like a kingdom in the sky and there's this whole world in the clouds, you do really feel that. And you do in the UK cover as well, but I feel like the UK cover is a bit more, what's the word, uh, a bit more childlike. Whereas this one looks like it could be a lot more, I don't know, like a lot more grown up-ish. It's a terrible way of describing it really. But I love seeing... I love seeing the clouds and the, the creatures in the clouds as well as the castle in the background and you see like the little dragon, you see Casper in the, in the, in the, what do you call it, hot air balloon. I think I might go on the American cover for this one again. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna say the American cover. I love the colour in the UK cover but I think I prefer the American cover. I didn't think this would actually happen but I believe we're neck and neck so far so I th honestly thought that the UK would landslide win this but apparently not. Okay so uh, with this next one again there are two different versions for the UK cover. So the next one I'm going to compare is Nevermore The Trials of Marion Crow by Jessica Townsend and there is a UK hardback cover as well as a UK paperback cover. And then we have the American cover, of course, which I believe is the only one I can find. So I don't think there is multiple versions of the American cover. I would say, <laughs> this is really hard actually, um, if I was going to rank them, I would say the hardback UK cover would come bottom, however I still love it. Um, and then the American cover, and then the UK paperback cover would win it. I think, I think that's what I'm going to go with. I think the UK has won this one again. I love, again, I love the blue. I love how vibrant and colourful the UK version is. Both the paperback and the hardback versions of Nevermore for the UK. Uh, I, what I love more about the paperback than I do the hardback is that you see a bit more with the paperback version and you get more of a sense of, again, what the story is about. There's a bit more magic. With the hardback version of it, it's just a bit too ambiguous for me. And I love it when books have a bit more going on for it. Yeah, so I love seeing, like, the brolly reel. I love seeing the brollies being out on the... On both versions, actually. On all of the versions, you see the brollies out. But I don't know, there's just something a bit more whimsical about the, the UK paperback edition. With, yeah, with everything. I think it's just a bit more whimsical. With the American version of it, I think... I, I love... I do like the art style... But at the same time, it's not to my taste, really, the art style of it. I do own Hollow Pox, the American version, because again, it was in an Al Grey Jr. box. And I do love it in person. I think it's a great cover and stuff. But for the first Nevermore, I don't know. It's just, I really do like, I like the art style, but I kind of don't at the same time. Like, I don't want to be mean or anything. Like, I'm sure, like, it, it is gorgeous. Like, don't get me wrong. There's more talent in this cover than I could ever do. But I don't know. It just... Yeah, it's not really drawn me as a fantasy book, a middle grade fantasy book, because really it's just three people with the brollies out. It just reminds me a little bit of Practical Magic. It's not really like middle grade fantasy. Like that's that's not what it represents to me when I look at that cover. So I prefer the Morrigan on the UK cover because she just looks more, I don't know, like not surprised. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It's fine. It's fine. Both covers are great. Okay, so the next one is going to be quite hard, and the next one will be Amari and the Night Brothers by Baby Alston. Both covers are very, very similar, and in fact, I'm looking at them now and I'm thinking, which one's which? <laughs> so yeah, both of them are very, very similar, and it depicts the exact same moment in the book. However, you can see two very different art styles, and I think the American version has a bit more of a realistic kind of art style, especially in Amari's face. You do see a lot more of her futures. Oh god, I really don't know with this one actually. I love the font of both of them too. They're both different. Oh, but I love the crack in the R in the UK cover. I really do like that. But I love the way the American logo looks as well though. That's the thing. And then 
The one in the UK, it's a bit more zoomed out, so you can see more of the the damage. But, uh, oh, I've just realised as well, in the US version of it, you can see, like, birds in the blue mist magic thing. Oh, man. Okay. Okay, I think I've made my mind up. I think I'm going to go with the American edition of this one. And even though I already have the UK edition pre-ordered, I might end up getting the American version as well because one, support the author, debut author, but also I just love that cover. It's so beautiful. Oh man. Oh. This one was actually the hardest one, but I think it's because both of them are very, very similar. But I am going to go for the American version on this one. Okay, next I'm going to do Tilly and the Book Wanderers by Anna James. Now again, and I'm not complaining or anything, but the hardback and the paperback editions of the UK release have different covers. And I don't think there are multiple covers of the American edition. I think there's just the one. So the UK hardback and the American hardback have very similar covers. Like, extremely similar. Except the UK one has Pages and Core, which is a series name, a lot more prominent. However, the US version has like this old kind of bookshop, almost kind of sign with the book title in it. And honestly, I love that so much. So I think I prefer the American hardback over the UK hardback. And I'm not taking into account what these hardbacks are like under the dust jacket because honestly some of these are gorgeous under the dust jacket and the Nevermore ones again gorgeous under the dust jacket however I can't compare it with the American version of it because I don't have that one but they're extremely similar both got Tilly with their back to the to us and it has the same shape of the like book page thing I don't know but it does have like the items coming out of the books in the American hardback, however, in the UK hardback, you do see Alice from Alice in Wonderland and Anne from Anne of Green Gables. So, do I prefer the UK hardback or the US hardback? That's actually really tough. But I love the logo on the American hardback, though. However, saying that, though, I do think, out of all of them, I love the paperback version of the Tilly and the Book Wanderers book the most, the UK paperback. So I think the UK is going to win this one again. Just because, again, I love book covers that has a lot going on for it. And you do see, you know, you well, Tilly's face in the camera for one camera. Tilly's been illustrated in a way that you can see her. And honestly, I love the way she's illustrated. She's very childlike and it really matches the tone of the story. And you see the pages flying everywhere. You see Alice. You see, you know, a captain from Treasure Island. I'm down myself again, but I think, yeah, I think that's what I'm going to go for. Oh, okay. But again, with the Nevermore books, it would be the... Uh, it's, uh, but I don't want to put it bottom, though, because it's gorgeous. But I think the UK hardback, then the American hardback, and then the UK paperback. I think that's how I'm going to rank it. So UK wins again. Okay, next I'm going to do Malamanda by Thomas Taylor. And again, the UK and the US have different covers. However, the... Okay, so Malamanda in America was released in hardback with the cover I've got on the screen. However, it was then re-released in paperback with the UK cover. But I'm just going to compare it as if it was just the UK paperback and the US hardback. Because then it's just comparing the same cover if I do the paperback version of the American one and it's just weird. Straight away, I'm going to say the UK cover. I do like the American cover because there's something really sinister about just seeing the eye and it does reflect very well that there is this really insidious creature and it does spark a little bit of fear in me, I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little bit scared. Again, I just love colours I have a bit more going on for it. I love the seaside and pastel colours of the UK paperback actually. I love the yellow, I love the blue, I love the mixture of them both together. And I just love seeing Herbie and Violet at the top of the, the hotel. I don't think there's anything else I can really say about this one. I do like the US version of it though. It, it's underwater, you can see the seaweed, it's very green, and it's just what I picture it. However, yeah, I think I just love the UK version of it too much to, to even consider the US version a contender on this one. So I'm sorry about that. And also, it must suck for the series because I'm sure that Gargantus was released in America with the UK cover and not its own cover. So that series is just not going to match in America. So guys, I feel for you. I really do. So I'm going to do the ones that were requested quite a lot of in the Instagram story I did. And the first one was Arusha and the End of Time by Roshni Chokshi. And 
I don't think there's that big a difference of them because it's really hard for this one because I don't really know what the original, original cover of this one is. I'm seeing lots of different covers on Google at the minute. And I mean, I have the UK paperback version of it, which I have on the screen now, but I believe it also came out with another cover. I'm going to put the one I think is the original American cover on the screen, but I might be wrong on this one, but at least they're different. Otherwise, it's just the same cover that I'm pretty much comparing. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not the hugest fan of both of these covers. I don't think either of them truly represent what is going on in the story. I mean, kind of the American one that I've got on the screen. Like, is it the original one? I don't know. This is where I mess up. I just don't really like the, the that, that cover at all, to be honest. It just, yeah, with a big demon and then Arusha in the middle there with like some kind of magic and power coming off her. I just, I don't know why, but I just don't really like that cover. It's, it's dark. It's not really appealing. But whereas the UK paperback version that I've got, that I've got on the screen, I mean, I might have wrong covers up, so do let me know in the comments. It just, again, it's just not a lot really going on in that. You know that I love either of them, but I'm going to say the UK one again, because I prefer it. I like the purple. I like the font of the writing, but it's just not, again, both of them don't really draw me in. I mean, fortunately, I picked them up anyway because I knew how beloved they were and I really enjoyed the first Arusha and I need to read the rest of them. But I wouldn't have picked it up on Gut Instinct alone if I had seen that in a store. It just wouldn't have drawn me in at all. Another much requested one was The Train to Impossible Places by Paige e. Bell and both of the UK and the US cover are just so wholly different and I love them both for different reasons. I love the UK version because it's so purple and just it just has so much magic going on in it. Like I love how again just imaginative it is and seeing the characters on there as well and there's a little bit of chaos on the cover. There's quite a bit going on for it. I love the way the font is as well, like the writing of The Train to Impossible Places. The title, it just, oh I love the train track just going through that. Just genius. Now for the American version of it, I love how I believe this cover is set when they're underground and they're in the, was it the Trolls? I think it was during the Trolls section where everything was kind of like upside down and you do see that reflected in the American cover and I love that you see the, the front of the train and yeah I like it, I like it a lot. It shows a different kind of side to, to the story. That I'm going to say the UK cover because again when I'm looking at both of them next to each other the UK cover just draws my eye straight away. Love the purple, love the colour, love the magic that it radiates. So the UK wins that one. Okay, now The Wizards of Wands by Cressida Cowell. Again, two wholly different book covers. And I mean, oh gosh. You know what? I had my mind pretty much made up before I even Google searched this. I thought I would just go for the UK cover because it's illustrated by Cressida Cowell. Like, it's just all of her illustrations inside of it. So the cover is very reflective of the contents. It's very heavily illustrated inside. So I thought, oh yeah, it's going to be the best because I, I knew that the American cover has like a totally different cover that isn't illustrated by Cressida Cowell. So I don't know if the illustrations were taken out of the American version or not. I don't know, does it have different illustrations inside? If so, then I guess the cover probably reflects the the contents of the book very well too. I love how more realistic the American version of it looks, though. I do. I love... It looks a lot more adventurous and a lot more action-packed than just the purple crow on the UK cover even. And, oh gosh, you know what? The more I look at it, the more I love the American cover. Not gonna lie. The more I look at it, I'm being swayed. I am being swayed. I love the font. I, I love the way the writing of the American version is as well. It looks very, again, rather magical. It's a hard one, but I'll be a little bit controversial and go for the American version because I do really enjoy that cover. I really do. Okay, so the final one that I'm going to do is City of Ghosts by Victoria Schwab. And Yes, I can see. <laughs> Honestly, I love how both of them are right next to each other because I'm going to need all the help I can get with this one, to be honest, because I really like both of them. I do. I like almost simplistic both of them are. In the UK version, it's very red. You can see the, the Edinburgh skyline and you can see very vaguely the, the ghosts in the red. Like, it's quite ominous that. But again, kind of same with the American version. It's very white it's very hazy, which I guess is quite reflective of some of the storyline within the book. And oh, I love 
I mean, I love that there's a cat on both of them for one as well. That is always a plus. But there aren't really the ghostly silhouettes in the American version. I feel like if there was, it might have beaten the UK version just a slightly. But I think I'm going to say the UK version for this one as well, because I love the red and I love the ghostly silhouettes. But again, I kind of do like the stripped back kind of white, minimalistic version of the American cover as well. It's just, it's good. And even with the Edinburgh skyline on that one too, they are kind of ghostly a little bit because one of them looks like it's got eyes. I mean, I'm probably reading a bit too much into it, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, nothing really else to say about that cover, except that I prefer the UK version. So it looks like the UK won with nine wins. And unfortunately, America, you lost with just five. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Do let me know which ones you prefer. Of course, we will have most likely different opinions and different tastes in what we are looking for in our book covers. And of course, not that a book cover is indicative of what is inside. You should never judge a book by its cover. However, when the covers are this gorgeous for middle grade, it's very hard not to. And it was just really fun to compare them. I really enjoyed doing that. And I most likely will do another one in like a year's time or something as more books are getting released, more middle grade books are getting released in both territories. It'll be great to see all of the differences. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Please leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you haven't already. Again, let me know in the comments which ones you preferred. And I do have like a, a blank template of all these names in the description box. So copy, paste it. Let me know which ones you prefer out of all of them. And yeah, I will hopefully see you in the next video. Bye.